Hi, I'm Granger Metter. We're going to look at how to import a file of scanned answer sheets into PaperScore. Okay, now we're going to look at how to import that scanned file of answer sheets into PaperScore inside Canvas. So I'm going to open up Canvas. I'm going to find the course where I have that quiz saved. And you might think the first thing I'm going to do is go down to PaperScore so I can import, but I'm not. I had locked down that quiz I'd made, so I'm going to go pick quizzes and find that quiz in the list of quizzes for the course. Mine was called Sample Quiz for Paper Score. Now I can click on that title, open it, and then pick the Edit button, or I can just hit this gear again and pick Edit, because I want to edit the options for this quiz. So once I get it open and it's loading up here, I want to scroll down this screen and look at these options for the quiz, and I want to turn off this access code business, because as long as that's set, Paper Scorer won't actually be able to import scores. Everything will look like it will go through, but nothing will show up. So I click on that, turn off the access code, then I hit Save, and now that quiz is open, and I can let Paper Scorer put some scores in it. So how do we do that? Well, over in the navigation column for the course, we go find Paper Scorer. Click on that. And we've seen this screen before. This is where we might have originally created a quiz if we did it from scratch, for example. But I want to upload those answer sheets. I don't want to import scores. That's not the one I want. I want this one, upload answer sheets. I'll pick that, it gives me some precautions, says make sure they're all in portrait mode, not tilted. Make sure they're all lined up, get some good lighting. You might try higher dots per inch on your scans and darker if they're not working. And I'm ready to add sheets. So I just click on that, add sheets. I'm going to go find that file I'd saved. There it is, MX whatever. Here's I have some funny name on it, but that's the file you want. It's the one you saved earlier. Click it, and it'll slowly load that up into Power Paper Score. And it'll eventually figure out how many sheets there are and then show its progress on scanning them down in these little numbers. So you can see that right now it's still figuring things out. But yep, there are three answer sheets in that set that I was uploading hasn't scanned in yet. Now these numbers will start incrementing as it scans through them one by one. And I'm hoping I won't see any of these sheet errors or import errors, but if I do get errors, I can try and fix those and there'll be an option on that. So I'm gonna wait this out, see if it gets all three of these successfully and hope it all worked. Up to number two, come on number three, there it goes. And I see that I had three sheets, all were successes, so did a good job there. But if we did have errors, there'd be an option down here or maybe one of these buttons to go correct errors. Let's go look at a couple of answer sheets and how you might correct errors. So let's see what we'd do if there were some errors with some answer sheets. I've got some answer sheets here that have errors, so I'm going to look at that. Here's a sheet that has a problem, and we see the scan that was taken. This one was taken with a camera phone. And you can see that it says one or more of the bubbles are marked partially on the sheet. And it's highlighted the one it just can't make out. Right there, that kid didn't mark that D properly. So we just pick it for him. Say, yep, they meant to put D there. And say, update. Let's take a look at another error on an answer sheet. So here's another shot of an answer sheet someone did with their phone using the app. And you can see here that it can't make out this answer that it's A. And it's like, well, sure, that's an A. But in looking over what this shows here, you'll notice that on number two, it doesn't show any answers, but I can tell that kid meant to put a B. So I can go back and fix that as well and make sure that's picking up. This number four should be a D. And I can work my way through here and make sure everything's fixed and then hit update. I want to show you briefly what happens if you forget to unlock a quiz. If you try and upload answer sheets and you've still got the quiz locked down with an access code, these are the kind of errors you'll see. Import errors rather than sheet errors. You'll see here it says, unable to import student response, try again. What it means here in this case is I forgot to unlock that quiz with the access code. So paper score just can't reach in there and do it. But if I remove that access code, we won't see an error like okay. this. Okay. Let's say we've worked through any errors that were occurred when we were trying to import sheets and everything looks like it was successful. We need to go lock down that quiz again so the kids won't monkey around. And let's go see our scores, make sure they're there. So I'm going to leave paper score and go back over to quizzes. I'm going to get my list of quizzes and look for that one I'm interested in. 
and it was called Sample Quiz for Paper Score. And I've shown you how you could use this gear icon and hit Edit to edit quiz settings, but you can also get there by just opening up a quiz with its title. Now you won't be able to do it on that screen that you get, but you can click Edit when you're looking at a quiz, and then you get that screen that we are interested in about changing settings. And you'll see here it's giving me a little warning that some kids have already taken the quiz. That's a great sign. That means that some of the scores have made it in that I had scanned. But I want to go down here and you remember that access code setting. I want to lock that thing back up. Now, if you know you're going to have some kids do some makeups online, maybe later, you can make up an access code that they wouldn't know, but isn't too hard. I wouldn't recommend that one necessarily, but something that you could easily tell them. But if you want to lock it up tight, then, you know, put in a bunch of nonsense and then hit save. And now that quiz is again, not available online to any mischief makers, but I wanted to see those scores. How can I tell my scores made it in? Well, one place to look is over here in SpeedGrader. Another place is you could look at the grades, but if you really just want to see the overall results of a quiz, the real key is up here with quiz statistics. So I'll take a look at each of those for you. One easy way to see all the scores at once is just to go over to grades and this will open up the canvas gradebook. And then we can look for the column in the gradebook that matches our quiz and look at the scores. And here we go over here, it says sample quiz. Let me make that more obvious. And you can see here that we had one made a zero, one made a one, one made a two. So, all right. If I wanted to analyze those results, I could, and I'll show you that in another video. But what's another way to see the grades? Well, you can also back over on the quizzes itself. So inside that quiz, so I went to quizzes here and I'm going to open up that sample quiz again. Rather than going over to grades and looking at it, I could see the individual results for each student by using SpeedGrader. And so I just go over here inside the quiz and look for the SpeedGrader command. And once I invoke SpeedGrader, it'll open up the different papers inside SpeedGrader. And so here I can see the student and see what they answered and what the real answer was. And I could see that throughout the quiz and I could switch in SpeedGrader from one student to the next and take a look at each one and see how oh, they got that one right, but they missed this one. And it's nice because I can see what they actually picked wrong. But if I wanted to do that as a whole group, see how the kids did overall in the quiz, I need to take another route. So to get out of SpeedGrader here, I'll just click on the name of the quiz up in SpeedGrader. That'll take me back to the usual screen about that quiz. And I've shown you how we could look in grades or we could look in SpeedGrader to see results. But what's really useful for a group is quiz statistics. And so in another video, we'll take a look at how to interpret quiz statistics.